Good morning. Morning. The public uh, front, we are back in session. The parties and council are present. All members of our jury and our alternates are present. And I understand we're going to interrupt Mr. McStay's testimony uh, briefly to take a short witness out of order who uh, came in from out of the area today. Is that right? That's correct, Your Honor. All right. Uh, you can call your next witness then. Sorry, people call that for next week. Do you want to see the company about to get an adult in the court of the court? Shall we repeat the whole thing and Thank you. Speak your full name, spell it for the record. Jennifer Mitchley, A E N N I F E R M I T C H L E Y. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Mitchley. Where did you live in February of 2010? Albert, California. What was your address? Three four six six Avocado Vista Lane. And do you still reside there? No. What city do you live in now? Aspen. So it's much colder there, I take yes. it. <laughs> okay. Um, when did you actually move to Aspen? Uh, three years ago. And how long did you actually live in the house on Avocado Vista Lane? I moved there in '08. And I left in 2015. Who else lived in the home with you at that time? My two kids. How old were your two kids? In 2010? Yes. Um, they were teenagers. I don't know. In high school? Yes. And can you describe the type of neighborhood that Avocado Vista Lane was? It's a family neighborhood. Um, a lot of owners there, and they all go to the same schools and have been since preschool. Okay. I'm going to approach with People's Exhibit 569. And do you recognize what's depicted in that photo? Yes. And we'll go ahead and put it on the overhead for you so you can take a look at that. And it'll come up on the screen in front of you. Actually, what if I actually connected it to my phone? Maybe it's in here. I don't think that's it, but... <laughs> Is that the photograph that you just looked at, Exhibit 569? Yes. Okay, and so you described it as a family-style neighborhood. Um, what else can you tell us about this particular neighborhood that you lived in? Um, well, I didn't talk a lot to my neighbors, but a lot of the neighbors, especially in the cul-de-sac, um, everybody knew each other, and they would have parties and events and football things. They have community parks there that people go to, but when I moved there, my kids were teenagers, so we didn't really participate in that. Okay. And if you look into the top of the photo, um, I think you see your address of the 3466 Avocado Vista Lane. Is that right? Yes. And is that, is that a canyon that's behind that? Yes. Okay, so there's no other housing track or anything behind that? No. And if we look at the opposite side of the street, you'll see on the bottom there's a box of 3473 Avocado Vista Lane, and then there looks what looks to be like a dirt patch behind that. Yeah. And is there another cul-de-sac off to the corner there on the bottom of that? Yes. Okay, so there's a cul-de-sac that backs up to the other side. I'm not sure if it's called Sackler Street, okay. but I do. Well, I used to walk along that street. Okay. 
Now, in 2009, do you recall a new family moving into the neighborhood across the street from you? I didn't remember them moving in, but I did see the kids um, playing out front shortly after, probably around December or January. Okay. And that would have been December of 2009, January 2010? Yes. And where did they live, if we look at your house there, the 3466 Avocado Vista Lane, where did they live in relationship to your house? If I was looking out my front door, it was not straight in front of me, but to the left. Okay, so if you look at that photo and you see um, what appears yeah. to be... It's where that circle is with... The white circle yeah. with the... The white circle with the thing in the inside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And that would be where that new family moved in, is that right? Yes. Now, at the time that the family moved in, in 2009 or 10, when you recall seeing them, did you work at that time? Yes. And did you work inside or outside of your home? Outside. Okay. Did you have a normal work schedule that you would work? Yeah, I worked Monday through Friday. And what kind of hours did you work? 7.30 to 4. Okay. Home by 4 time, every day. Now, you indicated that you had seen a couple of the little kids in the front yard playing. Did you ever have an opportunity to meet the adults that lived in the home? I don't remember meeting them. No. Do you remember at all what they looked like at the time? Yes. And could you describe for us what you had observed? Um, I remember the, the mom having dark hair, and I think she wore glasses sometimes. And then the dad had um, curly-ish hair, but that's about it. And I'm going to approach with People's Exhibit 3. And do you recognize the people depicted in that photograph? Yeah. Okay, Is what is that a picture of? That's them. That's the family. That's the family? Okay. And so if you look at the screen in front of you with Exhibit 3, are those the kids that you had observed playing in the front yard? Yes. And then that would be the adults that you had observed in the home as well? Yes. Do you remember what kind of vehicles they drove at that time? I remember a, a, not an SUV, but a smaller, it may have been an SUV, but not a, not a sedan, a four-door with, you know, with a hatchback in it. Do you remember what color that was? I don't. Do you remember any other vehicles at that time? I am not entirely sure, but I mean, there may have been a truck. I'm going to approach with People's Exhibit 143. You indicated that one of the vehicles you recalled was an SUV type. Yeah. Do you recognize that? Yes. And what is that a photograph of? I'm pretty sure that's the car, their car, their main car. Okay. This was a car that you had seen parked at the house? Yes. And then approaching with People's Exhibit 20. Do you recognize what's depicted in that photo? Yes. And what's depicted in that photo? I think that's the other truck that they own. Okay. For what do you recall, I, I realize it's been three years since you've lived there, but is that the front of the house across the street yes. from you? Yes. And when you lived there at that time, I don't know if you... Did you recognize any type of parking pattern? For example, would there always be one car in the driveway and one in the street? Or did you remember recalling anything like that? I don't remember that. I do remember the, the SUV one was usually backed in okay. to the, on the driveway. Do you ever recall seeing that vehicle out on the street? I don't remember. 
Did you have any security system at your house at that time? No. In 2010, did you have any video surveillance? Yes. What type of video surveillance did you have? Do you mean like the brand? Yes. It was, I think it was a Lorex video surveillance. Okay, and describe for us how that worked. Um, when I moved there, I had it installed throughout the house, so it was indoor and outdoor, and then it was put onto a hard drive that was within the screen, um, and so it it was very useful. It, it was four outside and four inside. Is that because you had a couple of teenagers at the time? Partly, yes. <laughs> um, can you tell us the particular camera angles that you could see from your video system that you had at the time that were outside? I had one at the front porch and one on the side yard uh, where there was a gate. And were those, were there two separate cameras that were attached on the outside? Yes. And those were attached to your house? Is yes. that right? Okay. And tell us how they would work in terms of you being able to view surveillance. It was doing 24-7 monitoring. Um, I don't remember if at that time I switched it over to movement only. So it would just monitor everything and then I could go back in and look back um, several months. And that was when it was functioning. It would, it would malfunction every once in a while. Okay, so the way that it would work is, and you're testifying that you can't remember at this point whether it was just surveillance 24 hours at a time or whether it was motion detected. Right. At some point, did you switch the type of secure, the type of surveillance that you had? I did to the movement only. Okay, and so if you had told the detective that it was a motion detector um, at that time, do you believe that that's what you had switched to in 2010? If I said that nine years ago, then that is what was happening. Okay. And when it was on the uh, motion sensor or motion detector, how would that work? If something were to move, it would somehow, it was always recording, but not recording for my View. So if something were to move, it would go back five seconds before the movement. And then um, how long would it record? And then it would continue to record until there was no more movement. And then the cameras that you had, you indicated that you had one that was on the front porch, is that right? Yes. And then you had one that was on the side of the house over by where the gate leading into the backyard, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. How far out in distance would those cameras actually record? Um, I moved them to my property only because you're not supposed to record other people's happenings. So it was to the street because I the, where the sidewalk was. Um, it may have gone further just because of movement of the cameras, but that was along my property line is the intent of where I wanted to have. The video. Okay. And then you indicated that you could review that footage, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Could you review that footage in real time or was it recorded for you to look at later? Both. Now you testified that you had had some type of problems occasionally with the security, or I'm sorry, I keep calling it security, with the video surveillance. What types of problems would you have? Um, well, if, when we look at the videos, you can see that a spider web, it would trigger it to record. So um, even little movements like that would trigger it to record and there's really nothing there. So I try to... <coughs> modify it so that it wasn't using up all of the hard drive on things like that. So it has good um, vision, like it looks really good video, but it it recorded a lot that was unnecessary besides movement, which is what I wanted. Okay. 
Do you remember when you actually purchased and installed this video surveillance? I probably did that in 09. I don't remember when. Okay. And had you used this type of surveillance prior to this? To that installation? No, yes, prior to that installation, had you used this type of video surveillance anywhere else? No. So was this a new system for you that you were adapting to? It took me about six months to figure it all out, but after that it was, it was great. I mean, I found the information that was asked of me okay. easily. Well, you indicated um, just a few moments ago that one of the issues that you would sometimes have would be it, for example, if there was a spider web, it would trigger a movement and then it would continue recording and eat up all the hard drive. Is that right? Yes. So would there be periods of time where the system would stop recording because you were out of hard drive? No. No? Okay. Would it ever record over things that you had already recorded? Yes. It would re rewrite over the oldest, which is why I was trying to reduce the recording. And how long would it save, typically, would it save the recordings for? When it was recording movement only, it was several months. Um, when it was 24-7, it was about two months. And would you ever have to turn it on in the morning or just it was constantly on? It was constantly on. Now, at some point, were you contacted by any law enforcement in February of 2010 regarding the family across the street? Yes. Do you recall who you were contacted by? I don't remember the name, but if you said it, I would remember the name. Do you remember when you were contacted? No. Do you remember being contacted by a Deputy Cahill? I don't remember that name. Okay. How about Deputy Tingley? I think that was the one of them that came to the house. <coughs> and Detective Dugall, do you remember him? Yes, that okay. name I remember. And how about Detective Lieback? Yes. Okay. So you initially were contacted by somebody, and what was the context of the conversation? From what I remember, they obviously saw my cameras, so they asked me if I had any footage, and I said that I probably do, and that I would look for it. Do you remember when that was, what date that was, when you were first contacted? I don't. Uh, does February 15th of 2010 sound familiar to you? I remember it being in the middle of February, right around Valentine's Day, yes. Were you asked any other questions at that time, or was it just in relationship to video footage? No, I, I think they were asking me if I had seen anything or heard anything, being that I was the neighbor. And prior to that point, when you were contacted on February 15th or around the middle of February, had you seen or heard anything that caused you alarm? Well... I mean, I saw the tape and police cars across the way, so that I remember that being something that I needed to pay attention to, and then I don't remember when all the news media was there, but that was quite bothersome. So I don't know if that was before or after they contacted me. Okay. Was there anything else that you had seen um, prior to any police contact or media being there that had caused you concern? No. As you sit here today, can you tell us when the last time was that you actually saw anybody from that family? I just when I saw them out on the, on the front yard, and I don't remember when that was. So when you were contacted um, by the police and they indicated to you that they wanted to talk to you about the video surveillance, did they give you any idea or indication of what was happening across the street? 
Well, somehow I knew, but I don't remember how I knew. Okay. So after you're contacted by law enforcement and asked about video surveillance, what did you do? I looked through my video for hours, because um, at that time we didn't have a date. Um, so I was just looking at the whole thing all weekend and um, was able to find some things. Were you given any type of a date range in terms of, hey, could you look for a video between this date and this date, or what, what exactly, how far back do you um, I don't remember if I was given dates, but I know that I looked through everything. Um, night and day, I just looked through everything that I had. Do you recall um, talking to Detective Lieback and him telling you to look through your video and see if you had video from February 3rd of 2010 to February 8th of 2010? Yes, yes. So prior to that conversation with him, though, had you started looking through your video already? Yes, yes. And so after you looked through your video, did you find anything that you believe to be important? I did. And what were the dates of the videos that you believe to be important? Well, I haven't looked at them until today, since 2010, but the videos that I reviewed with those dates, it was those videos. Okay, so I'm gonna actually approach you with two exhibits. 417 and 418. And can you tell us, are these the videos that you reviewed this morning? Yes. And how do you know those are the videos that you reviewed this morning? Because my signature is on there. Okay. And these videos that you reviewed, were they accurate in terms of what you had observed? Yes. And after you observed those videos, or after you observed those particular dates, what did you do? I called them and told them that I think I have um, some footage for them to look at. What happened after that? Um, two people came to the house and we watched the videos together and they determined that they needed that so they downloaded it. Did they look at any footage prior to that? We look, yes. And did they look any at any footage after that date? Yes. Do you recall there being uh, an issue with your video surveillance system that had occurred around those time frames? Um, yes. Could you explain to us what happened? At times it would stop recording, and from what I remember, there was a time after the videos that I saw today that um, it stopped recording. And do you recall what the dates were that your video system malfunctioned and stopped recording? No. Do you remember talking to Detective Leibach and telling him that you had footage of... Our objection is deleting as improper refreshing of a memory. Mm -hmm. Do you remember talking to Detective Leibach and telling him that you had video from the 4th and that after that date the footage somehow jumped to the 14th of February? Yes. And is that what happened with your system? Yes. So whatever happened on the 4th, you had video of, is that correct? Yes. And then the 5th is when your camera stopped recording, is that right? If that's what I said back then, then yes. Let me actually show you page uh, date stamp number 2174. And have you take a look at that portion of the report and see the first paragraph. Yes. 
Does that refresh your recollection? Uh -huh. So based on what you told Detective Leibach, your system didn't record from February 5th to February 14th. Is that right? Right. Yes. And that was obviously fresh in your mind at the time that you talked to the detectives, correct? Yes. Thank and you. you did your best to give them the best and accurate information at that time? Yes. Thank you. Okay. And then you indicated that some of the detectives had come to your house, is that right? Yes. And did they take a copy of the footage that you did have? They inserted a drive and copied it to the drive, from what I remember. Did you ever contact anybody from the video surveillance company that you had purchased the system from to find out why your system had skipped from February 5th to February 14th? No. Now, at some point, did officers come to your house again regarding your video surveillance? I think they did. I'm not entirely sure. with page 2176. Um, you indicated that you're not entirely sure. Would it refresh your recollection to look at a portion of your report that you gave to one of the detectives? Yes. With the court's permission? We can take a look at this portion of the report right there. Yes. Does that refresh your recollection? Yes. Does that refresh your recollection? Yes. Okay. Did the detectives come back out to your house in Fallbrook? Yes. And what was the reason that they came back out to your house? To get the footage off of my surveillance. Did they come out for any other reason or ask you for any additional information? I don't remember. I mean, I don't remember if we talked about other things. Okay, well, when you just looked at that paragraph, do you remember them asking you if they could take your computer at all? Yes. Did you allow them to do that? No. Why not? Because I I knew that they could get the information off of it instead of taking it. And if you know if they insisted on taking it, I would have given it to them. But at the time, you didn't provide it to them. Is that right? Right. Okay. Now. To your knowledge, did anybody do anything to verify the time of the videos that you provided in terms of the time that your computer was at and what the real time was? I remember somebody taking pictures while we were sitting there, so there may have been a clock on the monitor that showed the date that they were there. And to your knowledge, was your computer consistent with the actual time? The actual time should have been consistent. Okay. Had you ever been contacted by Detective Liebach after that, or Detective Dugall after that, about using your video? I think I contacted them because people were contacting me and I didn't like it. So I think I called my back and said, what do I do? What were you concerned about? My safety. And I, I'm a very private person and our street was flooded with people that wanted information. 
And what knowledge did you have in terms of what had happened to the family at that point? At that point, I knew they were missing. And your video, coupled with the fact that they, you knew that they were missing, did that provide any concern for you? Of course. Why? Well, when people go missing, especially in our neighborhood, um, I don't think any of the, the neighbors felt safe. And the fact that I, everybody knew that I had cameras made me feel worse. So I wanted to continue to monitor the house. And if the detectives had taken your computer at that time, would you have been able to monitor your house? No. And did you retain any of the video surveillance from 2010? I didn't uh, download it or save it anywhere else. It was just in the computer, and then it would have rewritten itself at a later time. Okay. And I told them that to make sure that they had what they needed. Okay. At this time, Your Honor, we would request to publish Exhibits 417 and 418. Okay. Uh, can we read the date of those? I think it should come up on the actual. Okay. Do I have them Just for the record, Your Honor, there's two files on this desk. One record is from February 3rd, 2010, between. 1701 and 1701 hours, and I think that's the first file I wanted to play. At least that's what the file indicates. Correct. Okay. Can you tell us what's depicted in this photo? That's my... Or the video, sorry. That's my side yard with the gate and the front yard where the fire hydrant is. So when we look at that, on the, we see sort of two parts of a fence. On the right side of it, is that where we see the gate area and the house to the right? Is that yours? Yes. It's probably your left, right? No, it is. It's okay. my right. Okay. Yes. Did you see anything in terms of what you thought or deemed to be important in that particular video that you just watched? You can tell that that car is pulling into their driveway. And which car would that be? It looked like the SUV. But I'm, I can't, I can only see the tires. Okay. that be what you're referring to right there, that yes. vehicle? Thank you. And that would be on the third, is that correct? Yes. <coughs> now can you tell us what this video actually depicts? That's the same view, but at night. So this would be, um, there's a date on the top of this that indicates it's February 4th of 2010, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And did you see something in this video that you believed was significant? That's a car pulling out of their driveway. And can you tell which car that is? I can't tell.
And then moving on to Exhibit 418. Again, this has two audio files on it, or two video files on it, and the first one. This would also be from February 3rd of 2010, is that correct? Yes. And what are, what's depicted in this in terms of the view? This is the, the front of my house, and you can see the same fire hydrant, so it's just a different angle, um, about 30 feet apart. And is this a view from the camera that you had mounted on the front porch area? Yes. Okay. Now you indicated to us before that you had moved the camera so that it would basically just cover the front of your house and perhaps a little bit into the street. Is that right? Yes. And is that the angle that we see in this video? Yes. And did you observe something significant in this video? Yes. What was that? Well, that's the truck, not the SUV. Okay. Is that the one, the same one that we saw? There's Whiskers the cat. Yes. Is that the same one that we saw in the previous video? Yes, you we had the recording at the same time. It's just a different angle. Okay. And then moving on to the second video, which is a tad bit longer, unfortunately. You've had an opportunity to review this video, is that right? Yes. And did you see uh, a certain particular period on the video that you believe to be relevant? It is towards the end, at about 10.30, and you can see another car. And right now we're at 10 minutes and one second. And did you see anything significant in that period of time? There's a car driving. Five. Okay, and then? And then right there you can see that that's coming out of the driveway. Another car's going to come right there. That car? Yes. Okay. And these were the two videos that we looked at, Exhibits 417 and 418. Those were the videos that you had reviewed with the detectives from San Diego, is that right? Yes. I have no further questions for this witness. Cross. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Mitchell, can you hear me okay? Yes. If you can, just please tell me to speak up, and I will try to... I project as well as I can. Are you a football fan? No. 
ever watch the Super Bowl? Yes. Do you remember the Super Bowl that year? No. Because I think uh, St. Louis played somebody Sunday the 7th. Do you remember that? I I watched like maybe two of those. The reason I ask is I'm trying to see if you can have perspective on time, if you remember that weekend. It was the weekend before Valentine's Day. Do you remember Valentine's Day in 2010? Anything about that year stand out? Considering you had all the press and the police everywhere around at that time. I know, I remember. Were you uh, working at that time in the beginning of February? Were you like not on vacation? I was working. And so you said you would start your work at 7.30, so what time would you leave your house? Seven. And that was your general routine? Yes. When you were leaving at seven, uh, did you ever, during that week, see something that you noticed going, that's peculiar, that's different? No, I didn't. There's nothing that stood out? No. And you said you got you got off work at 4, and you're usually home 4.20 on the bike. Yeah, yes. And do you generally, when you get home, do you generally stay home during the week? In the evening? Yes. Yes. So, assuming that week, Monday through Friday, once you got home from work, your routine would have been usually you would have been home. Yes. And what time did you generally go to sleep? About 8. And the house that you lived on, on Avocado Vista, your bedroom, did it face the front of your property or the rear of your property? The master bedroom was in the rear. Was there uh, <laughs> other bedrooms in the front? Yes. And were those occupied during that week? They, did, yes. So you would have had children, they were not there gone was, or visiting or anything, they would have probably been around. There was three in the front and two of them were bedrooms, the other one was an office space. Now, it shows you a picture of the overhead of your neighborhood. When I say they, I mean the uh, prosecution of Exhibit 569, and it showed your home on the top of the page and the other home being on the bottom of the page. Do you remember that? Yes. And then they referenced a canyon that was to the right of that page. Do you recall that part? Yes. So if you were, I was looking at your house, let's just say this is, this is, I'm looking at the front of your house, the rear of the courtroom. The canyon would be back to your right. Yes. Well, it's the, it's the whole back side and the right. And that canyon it had a wall, like a wall that had brush on it, but also rock and dirt and everything? Yeah. And it went high? Yes, it was a mountain. It was a grove. Probably an avocado grove, I would guess, just yeah. by the street name? Yes. <laughs> when you were in that neighborhood, could you hear a lot going on in the neighborhood? Because of that canyon wall. Yes. So did it kind of amplify or echo the noise in the neighborhood? I, I could hear when I was outside, which was a lot, in the backyard. So you can hear what the neighbors are doing, you can hear somebody close to their car door, that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yes. And could you hear people inside their house sometimes if they're closing a covered door or something like that? <coughs> no. Not that type of noise. If they were being loud, you could. If they were loud, you could hear. Yes. The houses, they were, would you consider them real close together or further apart? I would consider them close. 
There's five feet on each side, so it's ten feet in between each dwelling. And just for perspective, uh, Your Honor, ten feet, I think, would probably be about the edge of the court reporter's desk. Pretty close from, from what point? From where the witness is sitting to here is approximately ten feet. So the houses were this close. In the angles that you see on the video, yes. And then often the other sides of the houses would have a bigger uh, space. So they'd kind of be placed two next to each other, space, two next to each other. Yes. And you didn't have very large front yards either, did you? No. They were, you had lawn, you had a driveway enough to park a vehicle, but not much beyond that. It was pretty much the length of the park. 15, 20 feet. Yes. And would you call that street overly wide or narrow? You could park on both sides of the street and still get two cars through. So I would consider that average. normal, average. Okay. If you were home at the time you were about going to sleep, did on that week, did you ever hear uh, any signs of struggle or screaming or violence? No. And if you left the house at 7 o'clock in the morning, did you hear anything before you left in that week? Not that I remember. If I did, I would have reviewed my cameras. And if you leave at 7, what time is your general routine to get up? Five. And like my wife, she gets up at five. She'll take a shower first, and she'll eat breakfast and do her thing. Because do you take a shower in the morning or in the evening? Generally at that time. In the morning. And would you take taken that shower the first thing and then got ready for work and done your thing? No, I would have taken a shower probably at five forty-five. Now you said at some point the camera system you set up uh, was originally installed as uh, always recording and you switched it to motion detection. Yes. Was there something that you wanted to see that you couldn't see as recorded over because it was always recording? Is that what made you change? No, it was just me thinking ahead and not wanting, I wanted it to last a while and not use up the hard drive. So I invested it. On the always record setting, how much time could your hard drive save before you switched it? The 24-7 would do about two months. So it can save two months worth if you record it all the time? Yes. Did you have a function in there where if something was important, you can save it so it's excluded from the auto uh, overwrite? Possibly. Did you ever figure out that part of the system? I didn't. Do you know even if that system had that function? I don't know if it did, which is, I don't think it did, which is why they pulled it out on a hard drive. Or the other thing. When you switched it to motion detection, did you ever have a chance to go back and look and see how much recording you could save on your hard drive after you switch? Yes, it would go, it would go back about... A few, I would say a few, so three or four months. So you doubled your time? Yes. And you said you had four outside cameras and four inside cameras. Yes. We saw two outside cameras. 
were the other two in some other areas that pointed to something that wasn't to the street or relevant? The other two were next to the back. And you had four inside. Were they to the general living areas, I assume? Front yeah. door, that kind of thing? Yes. Now, when the detectives came over and said, we want to take your hard drive, part of your concern, like, it's just shooting the inside of my house. That's none of your business? Yes. I, I, I get that. Now, you said you looked through hours of footage before the detectives called. Yes. And during that hours of footage, you just pulled out these two events when they give you a time limit? Yeah, I was looking at everything that I had, and then when they gave me a better time frame, I focused on that. Were there any other vehicles going by on the 3rd or the 4th that you did not provide? I don't. I don't know. I don't remember. Was there any individuals walking on the street that could be seen in your camera that you didn't provide? Well, I'm sure that there was other things going on before and after what we watched. <laughs> you remember what those were? No. Did you show those other events to the detectives? From what I remember, we did look at other things besides what we just saw. And they didn't copy those? I don't remember if they copied that. You just know they came by and copied, you don't know what they took? I, did, I don't remember. I mean, at the time, I would have remembered everything. Okay. If that was a long time ago. Yes, it was. <coughs> Now, the file names on the video that we were discussing, uh, did you recognize the file system names that the computer made, or the security system made? It looks like the way that it would track dates, um, but it's been a long time. So that does look familiar, but um, it, was, it wouldn't say like February 3rd. It would just have that type of a code. If uh, we can switch to monitor four. see in the top left of that screen, this is exhibit 417, this is uh, the file number one, uh, it has the US channel 7, I assume that's camera 7? Yes. And it has a 020310, <coughs> is that the file system they would use for recording data? Yes. And then the 1601 underscore, does that probably represent the military time? That probably does. And military time, so that would be 4 o'clock in the four afternoon. Yeah. And then the underscore, then would go to a date and time, so would that be in the 4 to 5 o'clock hour for that date? Yes. Sir, can I just inquire what exhibit you're using? Uh, a digital copy of your exhibit 417. Mm -hmm. So that's stuck within the exhibit? Correct. It's a digital copy of it. Is there an objection from the people? Is there an objection? I, no, we haven't been provided with this. I assume it's the same, but I don't know. It hasn't been marked. And I'm not sure how you got a digital copy since it's been in possession of the court. Well, you well those, those markings are on the, at the beginning of the video, aren't they? 
on the disk, we don't know what he's actually showing from his computer. The disk is sitting right here behind us in the exhibit book. The question stands, is there an objection? I mean, if you're asking her to identify what various markings on something that's not on the video, then it's not relevant. I mean, it, it doesn't relate to the video. I was just trying to go over the file name, but I'll just use their exhibit, so make this simple. Well, that's what I'm saying. At the, at the, when you bring up the file, the, all that information is was on the screen, correct? That's correct. Okay. So now we're looking at the disk of Exhibit 417. There's two file names. See those? Yes. And what I'll do is I will make these. Again, it shows the February 3rd, 2010, 4 to 5 o'clock hour. Yes. And so the system records it in one hour blocks, and that's how they kind of designate a file uh, time frame. It must when you, when you pull it out. And then the file number two is from February 4th, 2010, from 1901, which would be 7 o'clock hour, to 1959, up to the 8 o'clock hour. Would that be accurate? Yes. I'm going to open, uh, I need four each. I noted things on the other one, so I'll put that one in. Use the London Bridge, it's not descending, but so I'm gonna go first to file number one. And you recognize this as you identified earlier, correct? Yes. Now when you were talking about or oh, talk about 10.30, or the, the people ask the question, we'll go forward to 10.30. That's not the time, correct? Now, that's objection misstates the testimony and video, Your Honor. I think, yeah, that related to the uh, other video, the yes. nighttime video. Yes, but it was, uh, when that was referring to, uh, that was not the time on the video, correct? No. That was the time drag of the section that was being shown, correct, along the bottom? Yes. So when you hear, we're going to go to 10.30, it's not 10.30 at night, it's 10 minutes and 30 seconds of whatever length video that was at the time. Right. So going to the first video in Exhibit 418, at the timer on the bottom, you will see it go along, and it has a timer on the bottom of the screen, correct? The seconds? And a car drives by right then at about seconds five or six? Yes. You want, see that? you want to see that again? No, I saw the car. Okay. At time 13 seconds, when that strikes, it looks like the time switches. Can you keep an eye on that see if it's non-continuous time? 10, 11, 12. Did you observe that? Yes. Is that how your recording system records when it skips around? 
Yes. From what I remember, yes, that's what it does. So only if you can pick up that switch can you tell if it's continuous or non-continuous time. Not on this video, you can't. So like, let's, let's see it again. We have, I'll go back to second four, and I'll hit play, and you will see the white vehicle drive by. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and the, at 12 and 13, the shadows shift, correct? Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. And so, unless you can see some mark on the screen, you can't tell if it's continuous time on that recording. Would that be fair to say? On this recording, you can't. Can or cannot? Cannot. You can see it shifting, but you can't tell what time it is. And is there anything on the recording that tells me what time of day that is between the 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock hour? No, not on this recording. Could you have done it on your system? Yes, you can see all of that. So if they noted it when they were doing that at the time, then they can have an accurate time frame, correct? Yes. But you can't tell it from the actual video on Exhibit 417. You can't tell what time it is. We'll go to video number, or file number two for February 4th. This is the long, I think it's eight minutes, 17 second video that we had to fast forward through, correct? Yes. And this is recording, even though you don't see anything moving by, was this uh, part of the spider web problem you were identifying or testifying to earlier? Yes. And that's in the top left corner of the screen? Yes. So that would cause it to record all the time at night at that time? Yes. So did you have a complete hour of time on that night? Or did you have the whole night recorded? Well, if, if spider web was moving, then yes. Do you remember reviewing the video and seeing the entire evening on the 4th recorded? I don't remember that. Do you remember seeing a significant time of the 4th recorded? Yes, because of the movement. Of that spider web. Yes. And so the part we see here in this exhibit, the 11 minutes and uh, I think it's actually a little over 30 seconds, uh, is not all of the video that was available. It's possible. You're not sure? I'm not sure. The first vehicle that was shown to you during this, uh, first vehicle that drove by in the video that was shown to you was at 10.58. I will go forward to, um, let's go back to 10.30. And we'll hit play, it's at 10.36, 10.37. It's forwarding through, and see if you notice a switch, a change in the recording. Did, did you notice a switch? I, yes, I did. So there were a jump in time again on this video. This is not a continuous 11 minutes. Uh, I think I know what it is if you rewind it. Okay. I'll go back to the... I'm going to start at 1023. 26, 7, 28, 29, 30, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5. Did you notice the switch? Yes, but that's me turning the front porch light on. Okay. 
Oh, okay. So at so at the ten thirty seven, ten thirty eight, right around that time marker, you turn the front porch light off. That's what that looks like. If you can see, you can't see the spider web anymore. So now it's focusing on the light and things being lit up. And so it's changed its focal point out to the post. Yes. Why did you turn your light off? Do you recall? Um, I think I turned it on because I heard noises and couldn't see on the cameras. And what kind of noise did you hear? I don't remember what kind of noise, but I remember going to the cameras and I couldn't see very well, and I went, went down to turn the light on. So the light came on and did you keep the light on for extended period of the whole morning? Projection day has to sign. Whole evening? Well, the whole evening, excuse me. Yes. Did you keep the, the porch light on all evening or just while you were looking? I probably left it on. And so at 10.38 on the time stain screen, you turn the light on, and then you see cars drive by, correct? Yes. And that first one was at 10.58, and then you see a vehicle pull out at 10.07, or 11.07, correct? Yes. So 30 seconds after. Yes. forward and then at 1023 you see another car drive by the other direction at 1123 thank you yes the law car driving by within that short time frame yes and you were still awake I would assume I was because I it looks like I turned the light on Pretty predictable going to bed at eight or nine. So. And so, and this is all before eight o'clock, correct? According to the timestamp, yes. Did you see any video of a vehicle pulling into the driveway across the street that we have not already seen in court today on the video in your review? I don't think so. Did you have other incidences where you saw vehicles driving by on the street that we did not see in court here today? Yes. Did you see any uh, video of individuals walking on the street that you reviewed that you didn't? we did not see in court here today? Yes. And when you were pulling like videos of interest, were you told what type of vehicle to look for? I wasn't told anything. If, if I was told something, it was just dates. So you didn't know if you were supposed to look for a certain type of vehicle or a person or anything. Nobody knew. Just said, what do you have? Yeah. And even though you saw other vehicles and people, Those are not reflected in these two exhibits. Can you object vague as to time in terms of 
sustained. You said you saw other people and vehicles within the time frame given to you by law enforcement, correct? Yes. And the other things you saw within that time frame, they're not represented in this exhibit. No, they're not. There was also some questions asked to you about whether or not you could hear noises very easily. You lived on the canyon side, is that right? Yes. And do you know if that same level of noise could be heard on the opposite side of the street where there wasn't a canyon behind it? I don't know that. Further, Your Honor. Anything else? Just one clarification. You said you had the monitor was shared between the surveillance system and your computer system? Yes. So does that mean you had two physical machines? The machine for the surveillance is in the monitor. So the hard drive is in the monitor. And so then your personal computer has a separate tower that uses that monitor? Yes. And so when you say you switched, it was really two different hard drives being shared by one monitor depending on how you wanted to use the monitor? Yes. Nothing further. Anything else? No. Any objection to Ms. Mitchell being excused? No, Your Honor. No objection. Thank you for your attendance, and you are excused, and we'll let you get back to us. Thank you. And we'll take our uh, morning recess this time about uh, 10 minutes. Uh, we're going to resume with uh, Mr. McStay's testimony. Is that right? Mr. Rimes? We're going to resume with Mr. McStay's testimony. Yes, sir. Sorry. All right. Uh, we'll take our morning recess uh, about 10 to 15 minutes. And we'll, again, remind you not to form or express any opinions about the case, not to discuss the case. And uh, we'll see everyone back in 10 to 15 minutes.